Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show. As always, man, I am so grateful right now uh, because I'm reporting live from Vian Chan Lao. Yes, I made it. This is the round three. This is round three of Vian Chan Lao. You guys probably don't even know where it is on the map. But you know what? That's why I'm here today. I'm your host today, and I'm here to just tell you just a couple of things that happened. And of course, for me, you, you know, I'm just so grateful. So a first time is for everything. First and foremost, I will give gratitude. I was sitting at Dean and DeLuca after, of course, I sat in a lounge that wasn't really providing any kind of food whatsoever. And I sat down. And I heard a lady say something. She said something about pizza and something about young. I didn't know she was talking to me. But then a lady approached me holding this plate of pizza, a pizza that I just ordered probably three minutes prior to that. And she's like, you know what? I ordered two slices. I can't eat this one. You're young. You look fit. Could you eat this for me? <laughs> and I looked at it and I started laughing because I'm like, oh my God, I just ordered that for breakfast too. And I'm like, would you like some reimbursement? She's like, absolutely not. Just one of the most wonderful, I'm talking one of those wonderful, older, grateful American women, you know, who is just lovely. You know, and I met, you know, I don't know if you meet them often. I can't remember. I haven't been back to America in the longest, but in Australia, I actually met one my first time being there about what, nine years ago. And I was buying flowers. She came up to my flowers. She's like, are you buying those? I was like, yes, uh, it's for this girl that I really like who ended up leaving me. But she was like, they are lovely. And, you know, she said it just so wonderfully. You know what I mean? I just got to give my big thanks out to that older lady. I'm um, just so grateful for that. And, man, it, it's just how did I attract that? I have no idea. I was in such a positive vibe. Um, and especially woke up. Transportation was great. Uh, Bangkok Airways, uh, checking in. Who the hell even takes Bangkok Airways? This is a premium boutique airline. Asia's only boutique airline. Piles and shits and loads of peoples. Okay? I said that with all S's just to emphasize there were too many goddamn people. So I'm over here trying to check in, and I'm like, dude, normally there are no people in any of these lines. When I check into Scoop, when I check into Singapore, when I check into this and that, come on, man. Y'all pissing me off around here. I'm trying to get into my lounge. I get to the lounge. Man, they got no hot food. I say, y'all crazy. Y'all want me to pay all this money? Only to just sit here and, oh, yeah, you can get some juice. There's some snacks over there. I don't want no juice. I don't want no snacks. I need some meat. I need some protein. I'm trying to get big. No, I'm kidding. I'm not trying to get big. Um, But, yeah, anyways, but I am grateful for that lounge just because you're able to get out. You're able to get out of all that madness. What, what do I mean by the madness? Well, basically, let's just say if you don't sit in a lounge, you're going to have a lot of people passing by you. A lot of people screaming, constant announcements. You really can't focus. You can't get comfortable. This lounge provided an outlet right next to me that was very convenient to charge all my devices. And I sat there for a little bit just to escape everything. Then I went to this pizza place where I ended up meeting this woman. So maybe it was just a blessing in disguise. Get on the airplane. You know what? And it's weird because this specific gate was one of the very first gates I've ever been to. Whereas we had to take a bus to our plane. Now, yes, this is more prevalent. At the other airport just north of the main uh, – well, I guess you could say just north of Bangkok called Don Mung. Yes, it's very prevalent out there. But however, not so much where I am um, or at the main airport called Suwanapum, the main Bangkok airport. So you know, I ended up taking this bus, and I was like, okay, this is whatever. you know. And I walk up, and you got these beautiful flight attendants. And you know a lot of people will say, well, they're normally beautiful out there in Thailand. You know, Air Asia, not care. No, no, these are different ones. These are ones that – these, these flight attendants, they actually speak very freaking good English, like extremely good English. And so, you know, they, you, it was a full service flight, very small plane. Okay. No, it was a three, it was a three, what is it? Three, three configuration, seat configuration, but it wasn't too long. It went back to probably about seat number ooh 25, I think normally it goes back to 30 on air Asia plane. So this was a, uh, what is it? An Airbus A319, A319, Samnan Kao. Sorry, just started speaking Thai, but 319. There we go. And so this is the first time I was on there, but man, this was smooth sailing. Barely, barely any turbulence, guys, to be honest with you. This was the most comfortable flight. Seat room, everything, back seat, people to my left, people to my right. They were all foreigners. No, 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 no. The people to my left, they were Thai, but they were speaking to me. I thought, oh, okay, you're from the Philippines or something. Because he spoke perfect English. He's like, hey, there's another one coming. Perfectly. He said, hey, there's another one coming. Perfect all linked together language. 
Next thing you know, sat down, looked at the passports, they started speaking to her. I said, oh my goodness. I said, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> there was an Indian guy over there. There were a couple of other foreigners over here. Uh, there, was, there was one foreign man that was so nice from England. He was like, you're sitting in the seat where I need to get. I don't know. He said something, but it was so nice. You know what I mean? It was just very, very nice. So, anyways, <sighs> there were two annoying Americans. They just talked about everything very loudly. Anyways, but you know what? The flight was perfect. So, big shout out to Bangkok Airways. Was that money well spent? Absolutely. Uh, no delays. Perfectly on time. Uh, wonderful seats. Very, very comfortable seat configuration. Uh, full service, great meal, great juice. Oh, my God, man. And, you know, I had some indigestion problems. So once I got on the plane, I told the guys, like, hey, man, I got to use that door. He's like, yeah, go on ahead. Oh, oh, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, bombs. So, yeah, man, after that, oh, man, so, 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 so grateful for landing in Vientiane again for the third time. I'm not that mad. I'm probably one of the very, very few out here, um, I guess you could say in the world that has the opportunity to do something like this. And so this is what I'm so grateful for. You know, just got to just be just uh, all the bad things that have happened. What is that noise? Oh, OK, boy, I thought that was love making. I said, boy, y'all need to hush it up. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, man, just so grateful for the entire process. This year has been just phenomenal beyond belief. I can't be any more grateful for it. So, I mean, here I am. Um... Of course, getting ready. Uh, what is it? Oh, focus, Arsenio, focus. Okay, I got to immigration. We're standing in line for 20 minutes. I get my visa very, very easily. Paid $35 to get into the country. Um, and then once I came out, I love Lao Airport when you're leaving because it's so easy. You just like take a couple of steps and then boom, there you are. And when you go out, these doors open and they're like people there standing there. And so um, it's so funny because I, once I walk out, I'm looking for my name on the paper, right? Because I told them that I requested an airport pickup. And so I'm looking, you know, looking for my name on the paper, and then I saw it. And these two guys, one of the, the guy that was holding my name, he was playing paper, rock, scissors with another guy. He won. And then he looked at me, and I said, hey, I'm Arsenio. And then he was shocked because I think they were playing paper, rock, scissors to see whose passenger would come out who would come out first he won there i was so i think again it was just all too coincidental uh we chatted a little bit of course guys out here man they're over here just talking about women and stuff so it was really funny you know how it is um uh, but he took me here indian woman was working at the hotel this is why i love i this is why i love everything about um what is it i love everything about what asia is doing right now oh i can't say all of asia to have an Indian woman and to have two Vietnamese people working at a hotel here in Vien Chan, this enables people in Vien Chan to speak English. Obviously, yes, being colonized by the French a very long time ago, having a French influence. Oh, boy, I'm about to go get me some French bread. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it encourages people to speak English all around. And so this is the best part about, of course, being – you know, uh, this is what I'm so excited about, you know, in terms of Southeast Asia and what they're doing. Yes, Singapore, yes, it's the, you know, English is the first language in Malaysia. They're very good out there and da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But Lao, a small nation that doesn't even have a KFC, McDonald's or anything like that, they're doing very well. And so when I checked in, did everything, uh, if you guys didn't see my Instagram live, I suggest you do to look at some of the things and hotels and things I've already talked about. But guys, here I am. This is day one. And coincidentally, guess who's right next door? I'm talking about the hotel right next door. <sighs> when I first came to Laos, I actually, um, what is it? I paid three, oh my God. I, I paid for a really shitty hotel, bungalow. There were mosquitoes everywhere. There were cobwebs. It was the most disgusting place I've ever seen in my life. And I literally paid before. I paid for two nights and... I was going to cancel the other hotel, but I didn't. And then I realized how bad, you know, the condition was of this specific place that I was sleeping at. And I was like, dude, this is disgusting. I can't stay here. There's nothing. And I don't even think there was Wi-Fi, to be honest with you. And I don't even know why I was staying there. But you know what? Who cares? So coming to the next day, that I don't know what day it was, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you pick it. And so I got out of that place, and I came to another hotel called Avalon. Avalon is right next door to this place. So when we pulled in, I was like, oh, my God, that place looks so familiar. <gasps> That's where I stayed three years ago. And so my hotel is right next to the hotel that I stayed at three years ago, and I didn't even know it. 
Pretty amazing, huh? Today was full of uh, uh, of gratitude, full of just, uh, you know, graciousness and me just being so thankful for everything going. That had to be the smoothest trip, smoothest international trip I've ever had in my life. There was no dragon luggage. There was no this. There was no that. I literally got on a train, went all the way to the airport, chilled in the lounge, had something to eat, sat down. No, it didn't even sat down, you know, sit down. I just sat down in the airplane. Came out, went all the way through, just had to wait a little bit, got into a car, came straight to my hotel. That's how easy it is. And so here I am. Yes, I'm here for a couple of days. A lot of you guys are probably like, okay, so what are you doing there? Visa. Got to get my visa. Very, very easy process. That's tomorrow morning. Stand in line. There's going to be a lot of people. Get in. Drop everything off. Okay, come back. Uh, come back. What is it? Come back Wednesday. Come back the next day at 2.30. So that means Friday, I'm going to go back there at 2.30, come back to the hotel, relax a little bit more, around 4.30, shoot off to the international airport just on there early, just in case things go crazy. And that's it. Go back to Thailand, and that's going to be the end of my trip. So it's very interesting. Last trip of the year, of course, topping it off, December 1st will be... Uh, yeah, December 1st is going to be the last month of the year, and that's basically in preparation of everything. So, guys, I got books. I got so many things I need to hit off. Yes, I'm going to be recording videos. Yes, I'm going to go get me some damn good-ass food. Yes, I'm going to go do a couple of other things. So, if I do make, of course, another podcast, I probably will. It's probably going to end up being Friday evening, which I post it. So, this is going to be for the rest of my trip. However, I will post burst in terms of what i am doing here on instagram so you guys stay tuned for that and as always man i'm so grateful so grateful for you are thanks for tuning in to another e oh boy i almost said the esl podcast so thanks for tuning in to the arsenio buck show again i'm your host as always over and